Welcome to Physics 142 Online again. Today what I'd like to do is briefly review the equation for the velocity of a transverse wave on a string and then at least set up one of the more challenging homework problems for this week, which is actually a very interesting one and it's related to the demonstration that I did in class on Friday. Okay, the uh, one-dimensional string, if there's a transverse wave on it, uh, this might be something that we would set up by plucking a guitar string or shaking a rope that's stretched between two points. The velocity is related to two properties of the string. F, the tension in the string, and then mu, the mass per unit length of the string. And this, again, is in keeping with the basic idea that the velocity of a wave in a medium depends on the properties of the medium. And so specifically in this case, the relationship you can see on the screen is that V is equal to the square root of the tension divided by the mass per unit length. So the problem I'd like to look at is problem 10 on the homework assignment, a classic problem in uh, the physics of waves. We're going to hang a rope, a uniform rope, so the mass is distributed evenly along the rope. And this rope has a mass M and it's got a length L, and we're going to hang it vertically so that it's basically only under the influence of its own weight. So here's the rope, length L, mass M, and the question that the homework problem asks is, if we shake the rope at the bottom end, and there's a wave pulse that propagates from the bottom to the top, what happens as the wave travels? Will it travel at a constant speed or will its speed change? And specifically, will it increase or decrease? And we can answer that question by thinking a little bit about what tension really means in this problem. And I think you can see if we just look at a small piece of the rope. Let's just take a little slice of it somewhere not at the bottom, not at the top, but partly along the way. And we'll, for the purpose of a later part in the problem, we'll say that it's at a height y above the bottom of the rope. And let's draw a free body diagram for this little piece. And then think about what the tension is. That piece, then, is subject to, well, some kind of a weight. There's a weight downward on it. And actually, the weight that, exerts, that, that is exerted on that piece comes from the weight of the string or the rope below that point. All right, And so uh, it's not the entire weight of the rope because some of the rope is above that point. So it's only the weight that's concentrated from the bottom of the rope all the way up to the piece that we're thinking about. And so that weight I'm just going to label as W and we'll figure out what that is in a minute. Uh, and then the upward force because, of course, this piece of the rope is not moving upward or downward, and so there's got to be an upward force, and that force is due to the rest of the rope pulling upward on it. So it's attached to the upper part of the rope at that point, and that's really what we understand as tension. That's the tension that's in the rope at that point. So we can see that, indeed, the tension does change as we move from the bottom of the rope to the top. And why is that? Well, if uh, we just simply add up the forces in the y direction here, we know that that has to equal the mass times the acceleration for this piece of the rope, but quite easily we can see that there's no acceleration and that the tension is equal to what I've called W, which is the weight of the part of the rope below the piece for which we've drawn the free body diagram. All right. So this piece here is what we're considering, and it's just the weight of the rope below that point. So can we figure out what that is here? Well, it's pretty easy. If the rope has its mass uniformly distributed from bottom to top, then we can simply make a ratio of the entire length of the rope 
to the distance y, right? So if m is the mass of the rope itself, and then y is the distance to the piece, then the fraction y over l is how much of the rope lies beneath that point. So that's the net mass of the rope below that part, and to get the weight, we multiply by the gravitational acceleration g. So we right here have an expression for the tension as a function of distance. And note that this depends on the height y. That's what makes this problem an interesting one. The tension, therefore, is not the same everywhere on the rope. So that allows us very easily to substitute into this expression for the velocity because mu is very simply given by, if we just go back to here, mu is mass per unit length. And since we're told that the rope is uniform, that is a constant. So we know f and we know mu, and we can solve for the v using this equation directly. So when we do that, we get that v is right square root of m y g over L, that's the tension, that's the numerator term, and the denominator, M over L. And so the answer that's provided in the homework assignment is really easy to see where that comes from. So that's the speed, and we can see that it does indeed uh, change as we move from the bottom of the rope up to the top. So that's part uh, B in the problem. Part A, you'll have to describe qualitatively how that velocity changes. But Part B, we've done. And so now, this leads to Part C. And Part C is an interesting one, because if that wave pulse begins at the bottom, how long does it take to reach the top? So how long does the wave take to reach the top of the rope. Because if the velocity is changing, well, we can't simply use right that distance is equal to velocity times time. That kind of an equation only works if v is constant. So since v is changing, we can't use that. How are we going to do it? Well, let's use the derivative version of this. right? In other words, let's look at the definition of velocity as the rate of change of position with respect to time. That's the def definition. Here we're calling it dy dt because it's the vertical direction that's important, right? That's the direction along which the wave is propagating. So what I can do with this, I'm trying to solve for time. So what I can do with this, and this is something where I probably don't want you to tell your calculus teachers that we do this, but we can actually cross multiply here and solve for dt. And you see that that simply is dv over y. Now what does this mean? This is the differential, or very tiny, amount of time needed for the wave to move a distance dy. for the wave to travel a distance dy. That's really what this expression means. Go back to the definition of the velocity here. right? Velocity is the tiny differential amount of distance traveled by the wave in a tiny amount of time dt. right? So we can solve for the dt, and that's just dy over v. dt is the amount of time needed for the wave moving with speed v to travel a distance dy. And what we want is actually closely related to this. We want the entire time. Not just the time it takes for it to move a short distance, but the time it takes to go from the bottom of the rope all the way up to the top, a distance l. So how do we do that? Well, when we have a differential amount and we want to get the total amount of that same quantity, we add up all the differential changes. And 
in calculus. How do we do that? We integrate. We set up an integral. So the total time, I'll just set this up and let you guys finish it off. The total time to reach the top of the rope is going to be equal to the integral of all those individual times needed starting all the way at the bottom at y equals 0 and going up and up and up and up until you reach the top. So that's why I wanted to solve for this quantity dt because right away, well, we see here that we just have dy over the speed v and we know what that expression is. We've already solved for that. And so this just gives g times y. And I will let you put in the proper limits for the variable y and finish off the problem. But that's how to set it up. And this is an important problem because several other homework problems depend on understanding this basic physics of a rope or a string hanging vertically under its own weight. See you in class.